This is Healthy Souls with Father Nicholas Lowe, helping you to live a Christ-filled life in today's world. Father Nicholas is the pastor of St. John the Divine Greek Orthodox Church in Jacksonville, Florida. Good morning. Good morning. So happy to see all of you here that are in front of me and also the people that are behind me. Uh, today is really a glorious day in the life of St. John the Divine. We've got a whole bunch of youth that are here from Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church in Charlotte, um, visiting our parish along with their priest. And I'll tell you a little bit about him in just a few seconds. But I do want to just thank all of you for being in church today. We love, love, love seeing this church filled every single week. And there's many people that are tuning in online. And we thank you also for being part of our worship, um, our worship service. You're part of our virtual family, if you will. And also to those of you that may be visiting, if, this is a, if you're exploring the Orthodox Church, you're looking for a faith to kind of call your own, we're grateful that you're here with us. And we encourage you, as you're leaving today in our cafe, which is the building right next to this, um, our church, there is an area directly for all of you. It's specifically our newcomers area. It'll tell you all about the great ministries that we have here at St. on the Divine. So I encourage you, if you're new, please make it a point to introduce yourselves to our welcoming team. They're going to be in the cafe. And as all of you have seen already today, we are so blessed to have His Eminence, Metropolitan Kuchel, Metropolitan Demetrius Kuchel. He used to be Bishop Kuchel, but as an honor, they elevated him re recently. So when you see him, you call him Your Eminence. But Metropolitan Kuchel is no stranger to our community. He has served in this area for many, many years. And it's truly an honor to have him here with us. We also have... Um, Father Jonathan Rasmini, who is the parish priest of Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church in Charlotte. That's the church that's visiting with us, and we're so happy that all of you are here as well with us. We also have our own um, Father Andrew Honore, who's the Navy chaplain that's with us, and we have Father Stephanos Ritzi, who is an extraordinary priest, serves at the Orthodox Christian Mission Center. Um, we have his children here, along with his mother, President Renee, who's always happy to have you with us, and our own um, Deacon Athanasios, who's, gonna, who's serving with us. We're grateful that all the clergy that you see behind me, that we're all worshiping together and celebrating our divine liturgy. So let's get started. You know, several weeks ago, I started a new sermon series entitled, The Red Letters of Lent. And what I hope and I pray is that every single time, every single Sunday that you're all in church, that we read from the Gospels, and the Gospels, you can always tell what Christ says in the Bible based upon the red letters. It's always in red ink. That's how you know that's what Christ has been saying. And so every single week, we've been kind of highlighting all of these beautiful statements that Christ makes during the season of Lent and why it was so important for him to share this and share that message with us every week. And today is no different. And today I want to talk to you about very, something that's very hard for a lot of us. And I want, as you're hearing my voice today, that I want you just to ask yourself as you're hearing my voice is, God, what are you trying to tell me today? What do I need to hear today? Because today I want to talk to you about believing when it is hard to believe. The definition of the word belief is defined as something that we take to be true. It's easy, church family, to say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, with our words. It's easy to say, I believe and confess, Lord, that you are true the Christ, our pre-communion prayer. It's easy to talk about how you believe in God when the medical report comes out okay, there's no cancer, when everything in your family is going great, there's no stress, there's no worries that you have. It's easy to shout from the mountaintop that I believe but life is like a roller coaster. One moment you're on top, the next moment you're on the bottom. My daughter, Gabriella, who loves roller coasters and uh, just the thought of a roller coaster creates nausea on the inside of me. In fact, I'm having a nauseous thought right now. And I just want you to know that there's one particular roller coaster called acrophobia. And acrophobia basically is one of these roller coasters that just simply lifts you and shifts you up into the sky like at 100 miles, what seems like 100 miles an hour, all the way at the very top, all of a sudden to simply drop you immediately down. And then it goes back up. I'm, see, I'm getting that nauseous feeling just right now. And then it drops you down again. It keeps going up and down. In the same way, that's how our life is. That sometimes you're on top 
Yes, I believe in God. I love St. John the Divine. It's my church family. I love God. But when the medical report doesn't come out great, when you didn't do a good grade in your class, when you have people telling you about why you shouldn't believe in God, it's in those moments where people struggle to believe. I want you to understand this important principle, friends. It's easy to believe when you're on the mountaintop of faith. But look into me. True faith, true faith is when you're crawling through the valley. It's easy to talk about how much you believe in God when everything's going great, when you're on the top. But it's another thing to believe when you're free falling to the bottom. In today's gospel, it is all about that. You should all know that in the Bible, there are 37. Can y'all say 37 with me? 37. Good, let's say it one more time like you're at a Jaguars game. 37. Great. There are 37 recorded miracles that Jesus did. So now you just have some Bible trivia that you know. 37 miracles that Christ did that's revealed in the scriptures. Now there are probably a lot more than that, but 37. Today's gospel is one of them. And just so you know, let me give you the context. Last week we read about the gospel of Mark chapter 8 in which Jesus is saying, if you want to follow me, you got to take up your cross and follow me. Like Christianity is not easy. Like it is hard to be a Christian. And then that chapter shifts to chapter 9, which is what we read today. And so a father, and some of you parents may be able to relate to this, a father comes to the disciples of Christ because their son is struggling to believe. Their son is struggling because he's been possessed by a demon that is causing him to be unable to sleep for years and years. And this father, you can hear the desperation in the words of the Bible. He comes to Christ and he says, I came to your disciples. I came to the people that were told to me that could help me. And my son is still suffering. In fact, sometimes the son would fall right into a fire and be burned. He was silent and wasn't able to speak. Could you imagine as a parent having your child, and some of you have a child that maybe have, may have special needs or may not be doing too well. Well, imagine the frustration of month after month, year after year, that this father is struggling because his son, his son is struggling. And I want you to open up your Bibles to page 61 because I want to read this with you. We're on page 61, chapter 9. These are the yellow Bibles that are in your pews. Page 61, chapter 9. We're going to pick it up. On verse 21, where Jesus asked his father, he says, how long has this man been sick? How long has your child been sick? And the father, in desperation, listen to him. He's saying, he has been sick since he was a child. Many times this evil spirit, it says on verse 22, has tried to kill him. Any of you parents, could you imagine having your something trying to kill your child and you watch it? You'd be in so much desperation to protect your child. It's throwing him into the fire and then trying to drown him in the water. Lord, have pity, pity on us and Lord, help us. And how many of times have you been in a hospital room or in a doctor's report or maybe you're waiting for your child to get better and they are not getting better. And you're like, Lord, can you simply help us? Like I believed on Sunday, but I got the medical report on Monday and I need you to help me. And the response that Jesus says is, yes, said Jesus, if you yourself can, everything is possible for the person who has faith. And I think every one of us in our times of life will utter this statement. I want you to remember this statement. Where in 9, chapter 24, you should memorize this verse. It says this. The father at once didn't say, the Bible says, he cries out, I do have faith. How many of you say, I do have faith? Like, I do have faith, but not enough. Help me to have more. Like, I don't know about all of you, but at times in my life, I have said, I have faith, but not enough faith. Can you help me with more? And let me just kind of give you some breaking news, church family, because I love you and I'm talking to you from my heart. 
that some of you right now are in this church or maybe tuning in online who are in a storm right now. And some of you are coming out of the storm. But I hate to tell some of you in this church today, but guess what? Some of you are about ready to go into a storm. And what you need to hear is that sometimes you're going to be just like that father. I have faith, but not enough faith. Can you help me with more? And so how do we do that? How does God tell us to help us with more? I want to give you what I'm going to call today the three H's, just to make it a little bit easier for all of you. We have that kind of faith when, number one, we hear, we have hope. One of the hardest things for us to do in a time of stress when the roller coaster of our life is free falling is to have hope in God because what you need to know, church family, is that when you are going through those difficult times, your mind is going to play tricks on you. In those moments, your mind is going to start telling you it's going to impact you physically. You're going to withdraw yourself. Listen to me, this is what's going to happen. You're going to withdraw yourself. It's going to impact you emotionally. Many of you are going to be sad and depressed, and it is for sure going to help happen to you spiritually. Like, God, why is this happening to me? And the Bible says that if you're not anchored to Christ, you're going to go off into the different currents of your mind. That's why the Bible says that the devil is like a roaring lion on the prowl, seeking after his prey. Do you know, I was doing some research in preparation for this sermon. I didn't know this, by the way. I'm glad I do now. Hopefully I never experienced it. But when a lion is running after you, the last thing you do is run away. When a lion is coming after you, you stand your ground. Because sometimes that roaring lion is simply roaring. And in our mind, when you go through those difficult times, there's a roaring going on. That person's not going to make it. That person's not going to survive. I'm not going to get out of this situation. It's going to always be this way. And if you're not careful, what you don't realize that you're doing is you are running away from the lion and then he devours you. I love this Bible verse from the book of Hebrews. It says, hope is the anchor of the soul. El pida, hope is the anchor of the soul. Can you all say that with me today? Hope is the anchor of the soul. It's the anchor of our soul. We need to remember hope. Here's the second thing. I want you to remember to hear. We hope and then we hear. Many of you know that my father was an electrician and throughout the, when we were growing up, oftentimes on the weekend, uh, unlike a lot of children right now or today in today's world, uh, we didn't go to the beach as often as we would have probably liked to go. Um, we didn't have the things that not every child would have at that time. On the weekends, I would oftentimes help my father work as he was an electrician. I was just kind of waiting to get something to eat. Typically, when we would go there, I would always say, what are we going to eat before we would even go to work? But having said that, oftentimes my dad would have to go into the attic to run wires. Well, back in those days, not like today, I was very short and I was very skinny. And my dad would say, especially in those, those areas where the roof slopes, he'd say, Nick, I need you to go to that very far corner. And when you're in that corner, take the wire all the way there. Now, I'd love to tell you that I didn't get scared, even as a teenager, when, I was, when it was dark, but I would always get scared. And I remember one time I was in the attic and all of a sudden, I don't know what happened, but all the lights that were in the attic and the flashlight that I was holding went totally dark. Like I could not see my hand in front of me. And I was starting to get very much worried. And my dad simply said, Nick, listen to my voice. Just follow my voice and you can get out. In the same way, when you're going through those dark attic moments of your life, listen and hear God's voice. You've got to constantly be taking the time to hear him. Let me say it in a very simple way. Bibles that are falling apart usually belong to people who are not. 
Bibles that are falling apart usually belong to people who are not. I'm simply telling you, you've got to hear what God is saying. Something as simple as this. The most often used theme in the entire Bible is two words. It's not love your neighbor. It's not feed the poor. Those are all important things to do. But the thing that God tells us the most to do in the entire Bible is fear not. You got to listen. You got to hear God's words and we hope, we hear, and then the final thing that we do, my friends, is we hold on. Today and during the season of Lent, we're in this season where every Sunday is a different saint. We celebrate today Saint John Climacus, who was a Palestinian Christian that lived in the sixth century. And this man, Saint John Climacus, every single year on the fourth Sunday of Lent is celebrated. The word Climacus means ladder in Greek. And all throughout his life, during his ministry, he would face time and time persecution. He would face at times the free falling in his own life. And listen to what he says about when you face the free falling moments of your life. He says this. Don't be surprised when you free fall. Don't give up though. Stand your guard courageously and the angels of God, they will guard and protect you. Stand your guard when you find yourself free falling. You gotta hold on to Christ because in those moments, everything in your mind is gonna tell you to focus on the problem and not God's promise. I'll leave you with this. There was a man that I love talking about especially when I do retreats or sermons on topics like this. It's a man named Lee Strobel, and he was an atheist. Questioned God, questioned that there was even an existence of God. And I encourage all of you to, if you ever get time, to Google him and also his brother, both of whom were atheists who became diehard Christians. And Lee Strobel does this research project in which he takes the over 400 prophecies in the Old Testament and does research about the probability of those things happening in our life. And so just so you know, the final prophecy in the Old Testament is 400 years before Jesus ever walks on planet Earth. That's like someone who's on the Mayflower predicting what we're doing in church today. And he takes all of these prophecies and what convinced him to believe in Christ in those difficult moments. But he sees that he said, if the probability of all of those prophecies being fulfilled, which every one of them would be fulfilled, one of the prophecies King David talks about is the cross. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before there was even a such thing as a cross. And so what he does is he says that he takes a map and he calculates the distance that are on a map, the land, the dimensions, the mileage on a map of all the different lands in the world and measures every one of them down to an inch and a half. Down to an inch and a half. And he determines that for those prophecies, for one of those prophecies of the 400 that we're talking about, of just one, let's just use the David one about the cross, would be fulfilled. The chances of that happening are one in 100,000 trillion. And so he takes this and he says, the way that looks like is if you put an inch and a half little tile all over all the land area on planet Earth and you gave one person, blindfolded them, and you gave them one chance in their entire life to pick up the one tile that happened to be painted red while everything else was painted white, that's the chances of that person, of that prophecy, of just one in 400 being fulfilled, and Christ fulfilled all of them. And so you young people that are here, maybe some of you adults, in those moments when some of your friends are telling you, doubt, let me tell you something in no uncertain ter terms. God is for real. 
And during those moments when you find yourself in the roller coaster of life, I'm asking you and I'm leaning into you. Remember those three H's. You hope because hope is the anchor of the soul. You hear because dusty Bibles will always lead to dark lives. And number three is you hold on. You hold on to God. Because it's easy in a few moments to say, I believe and confess, Lord, that you are true the Christ, the Son of the living God. It's easy to believe when you're up here. I just need you to know that I need you to believe when you're falling down there. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We invite you to join Father Nick and his wife, Dr. Roxanne Lowe, on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month for their Healthy Minds, Healthy Souls call-in show at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Ancient Faith Talk.